more lunch break. Welcome back to another lunch break. Uh, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Yeah, if you're trying to start a new website or an online store, Squarespace has the tools for you. This is a special episode of lunch break because we have half of the cast of dating after college. The better half. The better half. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, we're gonna have the girls on in another episode, don't worry. This is also a special lunch break because as a reminder, lunch breaks are now also a podcast. Add it to your list of favorite podcasts. And leave us a review. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, it helps with the analytics. So we have Justin and Brian in the house. Justin is the lead, he plays Cameron, mm -hmm. and Brian plays his best friend, Earl, in Dating After College. And we brought him on as special guest because episode one was just released yesterday. Tell me, what was, a, what was your experience, Justin? Working with us a second time? It's always a fun time. <laughs> Long Food Productions. It was uh, obviously a much longer shoot than, than the first one that I did. Got to uh, make some new friends. Aww. Taylor approached me with the script. It's a lot of fun and it hit home in more ways than one. Mm. Also want to take note that he said yes before reading the script, mm. which he immediately re regretted. No, I did it. <laughs> I, I, trust, I trust Taylor. I trust Wang Fu. I don't really trust Wesley Chen, but here we are now. That's why we're not sitting together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the barrier. <laughs> and this is our first time working with Brian. I got an email from Taylor when I was in San Diego, and I was like, I have to kind of do like this like self tape, and honestly just went to like the courtyard of the hotel we were staying at and did it. And I was like, I hope that's okay. He liked it, and then he wanted to bring me on board, and I was excited. I got sent the scripts and stuff, and I was reading it, and I said this before, but I actually really liked the writing. Because as actors, trust me, right. we see scripts sometimes and we're like, okay, like I guess I'll say that. <laughs> it was good, I had, a, I had a really good time and a uh, really good experience with you guys. Um, very professional. Oh, thank you, thank and you. And fun. We're trying. Um, two for one, likewise, like, got along with Justin. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, well, hopefully we can continue making more stuff together. I Hopefully you guys can feel that when you watch this series. I think one of the fun parts of writing it and working with these guys was um, seeing them in such relatable situations. Dating after college. Was it based on your life, Taylor? Uh, you know, I relate to certain aspects of it. Episode one, um, spoiler alert, deals with- Dang. Not spoiler alert, because it's out. It's there. out. Yeah, you, mm. should have, you should already watch it. You, what are you doing if you're watching this Where and are you haven't here? watched it? Yeah, go watch it and come back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're back now? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> now we can talk about episode one. It deals with online dating a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's something I related to. I met yeah, my current girlfriend yeah, through online did. dating. And I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's quite an experience. Have you guys tried online dating before? Yeah, for like a few days, I guess. I'm not even gonna lie, literally uh, last year, I downloaded Tinder. Mm. I never had it. I was asking my friends, okay, what does this mean? What does that mean? Okay, like maybe three days later, I was like, I'm over this. Because I want to, I don't know, I wanted to have like a general conversation mm. and then everybody was very yeah. forward. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I wanted to meet for coffee. Oh, you don't want to? Okay, that's cool. And then so I just deleted it. Mm. And I prefer to meet people in person, so. Right, right, right. Which is a challenge in itself. I think that's like what the series tries to explore too. Yeah. How was your experience? I mean, it online, worked out amazing online dating? for you. Yeah. What was the motivation behind you doing it? Was it just like, I'm going to try it out? Online dating? I, I think it was it was hard to meet people yeah. in LA for me. It's the fastest way to kind of start conversations with people through the apps. And I, I've heard good things. Like a lot of my friends had like found relationships through it. So it was worth a shot. You, know? you also have a very good outlook on how to approach the apps too. You use it like just to get that first we met and then, okay, let's, let's actually meet and not rely on the app mm -hmm. anymore, right? Yeah, yeah I've been yeah, told yeah. that you can get into a cycle where you're just chatting for weeks yeah. without actually ever meeting in person. So it wasn't that I think that dating online is bad. It's just not for everybody mm. and it goes the way that you handle it. But like you said about getting off the app, because I think people get stuck in the whole swipe thing in real life too, because they're like, I like this person. They're really genuine, but they always want more options. And that yeah. becomes like a It's like a cycle. what if, it's the yeah, what if, what what if, if there's someone which, better. Exactly. And Choice so, paralysis. Yeah, exactly. And then they just keep burning through all their options. And then they're just like, I'm not meeting anybody. I'm like, no, you're actually meeting everybody, mm. but you can't land on one because you're so indecisive. <laughs> what about you, Wesley? I've said this before in previous lunch breaks. I think uh, online dating and dating apps are great. <laughs> I haven't been on a dating app. I also want to meet someone in real life, but I am, I'm tempted because I, I know it's worked out for Taylor and a lot of my friends. I think I'm, I'm just a little cold feet, I guess. I don't know. How did you know that your current girlfriend was the one when you first met her on the app? Didn't. I think that was the hardest part because like online dating, you're more reluctant to commit 
mm-hmm. because you feel like there's so much choice. In my situation, there wasn't much choice anyway on the app or not. And um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come but on. but like beside the point, <laughs> we got along from that first date, just like dating outside the app too. And it was just about you know saying yes to a second one and kind of a third one. And as things progressed. I got to like each other even more, yeah. and, and it was kind of very natural. It's a great story. Off the app. You asking Taylor, how did you know she was the one? D- do you believe that it's possible to know that right away? I do. I feel like being forward and communicating everything is something that more people need to do. Right. So yeah, nobody wants to reject somebody. Nobody wants to be rejected. But people, I don't think they do it uh, selectively. But they tend to play games in a way, or they kind of like beat around the bush and they ignore them. And I'm like, just be upfront. Like, I mean, I'd rather be told, you know. Right. And I feel like the same for when you meet somebody, like. You know them off the bat if you guys vibe. And from there, you kind of just let them know, hey, I feel like you know we're getting along, the energy's good. And then from there, you can open yourself up because mm. as people, we put up these walls. Walls are there, yeah. Right away, and we're, we're like, oh, you know what? I actually really enjoy being around them, so I'm gonna like not hang out with them anymore or limit that. Right. And so when you open that up, you don't know if the other person's feeling the same way, and that mm. gives them way to kind of say like, hey, I'm feeling the same way, and then it just eliminates more unnecessary barriers. But I think it's possible to know right away. So one thing um, the series does is it, it kind of contrasts dating as an adult versus like kind of how it was in college or even high school, mm-hmm. right? I think maybe we, we could all relate just to like how we've changed or approached love or finding love over the last 10 years of our lives. Do you feel like you've kind of changed your approach or how you find people? Is this weird? Is this no, weird? no, it's not weird. No. It's just sad because I don't know if I have. If you've changed? No, if I've, if I've changed the way that I approach love. Maybe because you got it right the first time? No, that's definitely not true. I haven't. I feel like the way I approach it is just like traditional. I'm like a romantic and I'm very like yeah. old school and I'm just very forward with the way that like I, if I feel something right away or whatever it is. Maybe the question is actually like, do you feel like it's gotten easier as you've kind of grown, you know, like the search for love? I think the hardest thing as you get older is the amount of social interactions that you have. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, I enjoy staying at home and not seeing anybody. That's so. why the apps are great. You don't have to leave your home. <laughs> but but then but, they're messaging you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> High school and in college, you're you're forced to be around people. You're going to classes. You're constantly at social functions and things of that sort. So your network is is quite large for you to sort of mingle and and date around. But as you get older, you sort of have to be very proactive about creating those circles. I think even in this industry, like in entertainment, there's this false belief that we're always with other people and oh, yeah. and. You you know, and it's like, it's not what it seems. I think you you meet a lot of people, but you connect with very few. It's true because it's like, like I said, who you vibe with. And I worked on a different projects before and I, it's not that I disliked anyone. I just didn't really get along with them to where I'm like, hey, we're gonna hang out outside of set or whatever the case is. And for me, I think it has changed because before I was kind of in a place where I would like date people, but I was very insecure. When they would do something bad, I would question like, what did I do wrong? What mm-hmm. was it that I messed up on? Why didn't they like me? Why didn't this, why didn't that? Where now I'm at a place where I'm like, I'm good. I communicate everything instead of being around the bush and being like, so this and that. And I would lay down right away like, hey, like I'm interested in you. Can we date exclusively? Yeah. Are you interested? Oh, dude. Like, <laughs> that is, that's mature. I well, because I don't want to waste time. Like, no, I don't, I don't, sure, I don't yeah. play games, I just that's win them. Time. Time, time <laughs> is the thing that gains more value as you lose it. We talked a lot about like us finding love for ourselves, but what about, what about for our friends being wingmen, right? Mm. Um, so you play Cameron's wingman in, mm. in a lot of ways in the series. Did you relate to that or you know, what's your experience? Out of my group of friends, I feel like they normally ask me for advice, which is funny because like my character, I'm like, everybody's coming to me, but I'm mm-hmm. not in a yeah. relationship. <laughs> 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 I've kind of been there where it hasn't actually been like a wingman like they kind of play in media yeah. where like we go out together and I'm yeah. like, oh, we're gonna pick this person, go off you go. Uh-huh. Like it's been more like they ask me like, how should I approach this? And my, it's always the same. I'm like, look, just be upfront, yeah. see how you feel and you'll never feel guilty. You but. seem like you'd be a good person for advice. Yes. Yeah, yeah so. Know? Even just from this there. lunch break. What about me? Like, mm. Justin, I don't know. You you're just said your your outlook on love hasn't changed. Okay, no, um, I'm just joking. let me just I'm clarify. Just I may be single, but I am a very good wingman. <laughs> uh, Comment uh, below. The first sign of a bad wingman is if they say they're a good wingman. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just too much. It's like, okay, just gonna get this tension and like, <laughs> okay. oh, oh, is there anyone that is in a relationship that you can like kind yes, of take credit yes. for? Yes, I've set up six friends. No, you, no way. No, I have. Okay, you are a big man. You are a big man. Wait, and wait, do these people like, already like each other? And no, you? no, no. I set up six friends. Three of them are married. The other three, 
I don't speak to, so I don't really know anymore. But I assume they're still doing well. That that's that's an iffy part of the story that I don't. I've also so tried to fifty percent. Like, can I just say something? I've also tried to set up Wesley Chan on multiple what? occasions. Yep, he's refused every single one of my offers. Wait, wait really? What's the tea? Wait, <laughs> one of those people was me. <laughs> yeah, we, we had he refused, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you setting up your friends, like, was there any reluctance in doing that? Because these are people that. Yeah. You had friendships with. And also, did Fire. they know you were doing it or were you like the puppet master? I'm a very direct approach, so I don't do the whole puppet master thing. I see two people, I see into their souls, and I say, you and you are meant to be. Did they ask you, like, hey, can you set me up with someone? <laughs> or was it kind of like... You they didn't say they directly, single. their tears on a nightly basis of being single said it to me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Indirectly, so... I made it happen. Wow! So you're, you're like a tormented soul that can't make it happen for yourself, but for all your friends. Have you watched the movie Hitch? Mm. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Oh, uh, it's real. I love Hitch. It is real. It is a good movie. You would be a Hitch. What about you? Have you set up any friends like that are in a relationship? No, I'm not going to lie, no. Usually the people that they're interested in are people that I don't know. I'm not the type of person to go up to them and be like, hey. But there was one time we were all hanging out. And I knew that two people liked each other, and I was just like, so, so it's not awkward. Like, I know you guys like each other, so. <laughs> you said it like, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, at first they were kind of, you can tell their face covered and everything, but they ended up talking, and they got together. That is wow. a good approach, because once, once you kind of put it out there. Because <laughs> I can, think it's more awkward when, like, I'm sure we all yeah. been in a situation where someone's like, oh, did you want to sit next to so-and-so, or like, whatever. And I'm like, this is worse. I'd rather be like, hey, like, I want to sit next to this person, because I like them. Like, yeah, whatever, yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's kind of awkward at first, but I think it's worse when did you do it on the bush. Did you ask them to sit next to me? Um, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. We've been talking a lot about how dating gets harder, and it does to a certain extent, but the one thing I do appreciate as you get older that does make dating a bit easier is that you get to know yourself better. You get to know who you like, you get to know your own interests, you have a better understanding of, of who you are, and in doing so, you eventually end up courting people who meet your most genuine, authentic self. I agree with that for sure. Like, and, it, and so on one hand, it's like, it's getting easier because you know what you want. Right. But it's getting harder because what you're looking for is more specific, yeah. you know? Learning how to take something from the people you're dating, though. Because some yeah. people, like, when you have, like, exes and they're just like, oh, like, you know, my ex, forget them, forget them. And I'm like, okay, but what did you learn from mm -hmm. that? Not only about them, but more importantly, yourself. Because I think every relationship has an opportunity for you to look back because they call out stuff that you're like, I didn't realize I did that. Or I didn't mm -hmm. realize that I felt like this about certain things. And like you said, you get to know yourself better but you have to take that and apply it to yourself and learn how to value yourself more so when that is presented again, you know how to handle that situation. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of people don't. They just see it as like, oh, that was toxic. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, I've had toxic relationships too, but like, what did you learn from that? And yeah. when you do that, I think it's easier to navigate what you will and will not put up with and how you'll handle situations better. And then you could just find that person that, you know, it mm -hmm. that. Well said. Yeah. Do you think you're very picky? Yeah. In what sense? Is that why you think you've had less success? I know that I don't put myself out there enough either. How about you? You picky? Justin, it's not gonna happen between you and Will. <laughs> <laughs> Simple question. I thought I was picky, but the people that I ended up falling in love with were uh, the exact opposite of what I sort of imagined uh, people I would fall in love with. So you just gotta be open that the world hit you with what it's got. Oh. Oh. Sometimes it can embrace you. It doesn't have to hit you. Will you embrace me? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that's a great place to end this lunch break. <laughs> we can talk about dating and love forever. But we're out of time. If you want to see these guys more, you can watch Dating After College. New episode comes out next week on the main channel. But thanks for being on lunch break, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah some really powerful insight, some awkward moments. And some, maybe, moments of spark. Maybe, I'll definitely. Say. Yeah, when the camera stopped rolling, that's when the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll end here. You can catch Justin right now on Netflix, Umbrella Academy. Please catch me, uh, support Asian representation, and uh, we're excited for next season. There it is. Woot woot! And make sure you follow Brian. You can follow <laughs> Brian on TikTok. He's a huge oh presence. Brian has about 22 TikTok channels. I enjoy your skincare, your ASMR, your gaming. Oh wow, you remember. 
That's three. He said 22. I'm flattered. <laughs> Good enough for me. Good enough for him. <laughs> Obviously, Brian's very talented. Um, so beyond Dang After College, the show, you can catch him doing all those other things. Big thanks to Squarespace. They're an all-in-one platform. They have designer templates and award-winning customer service. Yeah, they have marketing tools. You can start a domain there like we did, or even host an online store. Make sure to use the code WONGFU at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. Also, just a reminder, we're gonna start a Q&A section for this lunch break, so comment below with some questions and we'll answer them in the next episode. This is also a podcast, so if you wanna get a longer version of this episode, check out our podcast and all the streaming services that we have. Links down below. All the links down there. See you next week for another lunch break. Bye.